hello. Today we are finally winding down List Like Woe for 2020 books, and that is because today we are talking about my best books of 2020. I have talked about all of these books in the sort of subgenre listicles that have already come out, but today we are going to ruthlessly call down the list of books that I loved, the best of the best. So these are gonna be my top 10 books of the year. So just to give you, I've got stats this year. We're gonna start doing some stats for this end of the year list. To give you a sense of how special I think these books are, there were 322 books I read that could have qualified to make this list because of uh, how I kind of time my books that qualify for a given year's list. I sort of take some of the books from December of the previous year and then go through November of the following. So in that time, there was 322 books that could have made this list. Of those 322 books, I gave six books five stars and I gave 19 books four and a half stars. So that means that of the 322 books I read, only 1.86% of them got a five star, which for me, I define as an all time favorite book, not just a favorite book of the year, but an all time favorite book. And then 5.9% of them got a four and a half star, which I would define as a favorite book of the year. So combined, that is a little less than 8% of books that I read, I consider to be either an all time favorite or a favorite book of the year. So I'm, you know, somewhat selective and somewhat picky about what I'm putting on this list. There's quite a big pool and not that many of these books make it. So I do want to shout out all of the books that I also gave four and a half stars to but did not make this list because I gave 19 books four and a half stars and only four of them could make my top 10 because obviously all the five stars made the top 10. So the ones that I read that did not make this list but get, got four and a half stars for me were Demon from the Dark by Cresley Cole, Undercover Bromance by Lissa K. Adams, Nothing is Wrong and Here's Why by Alexander Petrie, Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, When She Purrs by Ruby Dixon, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, Exhalation by Ted Chiang, The Man in the Brown Suit by Agatha Christie, Network Effect by Martha Wells, Beach Read by Emily Henry, The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander, and The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. So those were, oh God, even just reading through that, I'm like, God, those are good books. Those are a lot of really great books that just didn't quite make the list, but in a different year, 100% could have. But I just had a really, really good year of reading. The other th stats that I want to mention is part of what I measure in a given year are in my overall stats. We'll talk about this when we get to my stats wrap up. But I always measure the number of books I'm reading that include main characters or themes or are written by authors who are not like me in some meaningful way. This is just because part of what I value in my reading is, you know, basically being nosy about other people's lives and learning more about other people's experiences. So I am working towards more and more just sort of like inclusion and different viewpoints in my reading. So for this top 10, which I'm going to start measuring each year, 40% of books in my top 10 are by men, 60 are by women. I didn't have any non-binary people in that mix. 60% of my top 10 are books by slash about people who are not white. And that includes people who are black, indigenous people, and South Asian people. 30% of the books in my top 10 are from slash about people who are not American. Uh, and the countries included are Britain, America, and New Zealand. 50% of the books in my top 10 are by or about people from the LGBTQIA community. I also want to make sure that I'm reading kind of throughout generations and not just totally frontless. So I also measure if people are alive. So 10% of the books I read are from past generations from somebody who has passed. And then what I call health diversity. So people who are either differently able or have some sort of mental health concern. And 60% uh, of the books that I read in the top 10 are by or about people who are differently abled or have some sort of neural diversity. So actually pretty happy with that. And we'll see how that stacks up against next year's stats. So with all that being said, now we get to talk about all these books that I love so, so much. And I'm basically thinking about these books in kind of three tranches. So we've got the bottom tranche are the 4.5 star books, which I still obviously love, but but they're, they're kind of in the bottom. Then I had two five-star books that to me were clearly not 
in the very tippity top, though both of these I obviously loved, I gave them five stars, but they weren't quite like in the, the top, the top, top tier. And then the top four, I just really, I had so many thoughts about like how I should order these. And I will tell you that sort of the guiding principle that I've given for this entire list is my own enjoyment. So I'm not trying to say, like, I don't think anyway, I may make some comments to the effect of objective insofar as one can be objective about such things, quality, but mostly what we are talking about here is how much I enjoyed one of these books. And that to me is what is going to be the best is like wh which of these like topped my levels of enjoyment. So we'll start at the bottom. And like I said, I talked about these in my individual genre lists. So most of what I have to say like review wise or meaningfully about these books are in those videos. So really this is just you, me kind of explaining why they are at the position that they are at. So number 10, I'm going to say is The Great Influenza by John M. Barry. The reason I wanted to put it in the top 10 is that I just think with what the kind of current events that have gone on this year, this to me was such an enjoyable piece of historical nonfiction and such a proving case all over again of why historical nonfiction is such a joy to read because it is relevant to our time. History doesn't always repeat, but it rhymes. I forget who said that, but that idea is so true. I love history and I really believe in learning about history as a way of reflecting upon and processing what we have going on in our world today. You will see this again on this list, that idea. I had to, I felt like just with how relevant this book was for 2020, it had to make my top 10 list. Number nine, I decided that The Eighth Detective by Alex Pavasi had to make this list because just the sheer delight I got from this book of it surprising me in some way, which frankly is hard to do. As we've just discussed, I read a lot of books. And I think if you're somebody who does get through a lot of books, you become more and more where I think people who have been reading for a long time also feel this of like, it is hard for books to be truly unique in some way, or I don't know, I, I think I've talked a little bit about this with mystery and thriller. I know a lot of readers really value like being totally shocked in a mystery thriller. And it's just very hard to do that at some point if you've read a lot of them. And so that's not the number one thing I value. But I love books that have sort of a meta textual quality to them, which is what this book's project really is. That is something in books I love. And then the ability for the author in this, and this is a debut. I also am really impressed with what a strong debut this is for the author to take those meta textual qualities and say, Hey, reader of mystery, who's read a lot of them. Let me give you a very clear indication that I know that you know where this is going. And let me either live up to that expectation or sort of live up to it and then subvert it or totally subvert it. Like the ability for this book to sort of call it shots was just a delight to me. Like I enjoy, I just enjoy that in a book. I think that that is really fun. That's not a reading experience everybody's gonna get into. But for me, that was just really a delight. I just found myself being like, Oh, look, at, I see what you're doing here. And this is so fun. So this just gave me a, a big smile. This is definitely my favorite mystery of the year. And so yeah, I felt like just the, the sheer meta textual delight this gave me put it at number nine. And then number eight, I felt like had to be The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley, because this was definitely my favorite pick from my Operation Sci Fi project I had going this year, where I was reading all of the nominees for the 2019 Goodreads Sci Fi Awards, uh, just as a way to sort of get a better gauge on what's happening in today's science fiction. And this was 100% my favorite book that I found as a result of that. I also wouldn't have picked this book up without having done this challenge. So I also am very fond of this in the sense of this is sort of a if I wasn't doing YouTube, would I ever have even picked this book up? And I think not. So that just makes me happy. And uh, also, I don't normally get into a time travel aspect. And this book had that which made me happy. And uh, yeah, it just had a couple of things in it that are things I love in books. I didn't know that this book would have them. And I'm so glad that YouTube made me read this. And then number seven, the queen of the 4.5s, I decided just had to be Alpha Knight by Nalini Singh because I just love this series so GD much. I love this series. It brings such joy to my life. I read it for the first time, like the bulk of the series that was out at that time, right when I graduated from grad school and I was looking for a job. So like everybody who's had to job search and has been unemployed knows like that is such a weird time and like not fun. And this series originally kept 
me sane during that. And ever since then, it's just a consistent source of enjoyment, joy, and uh, just a series that I love what it's doing thematically. I love the political machinations of it. I love the individual sort of plots and love stories that happen in these books. And it's just such a great example of basically like sci-fi romance. And uh, I have a very high hit rate of recommending this to people. So anyway, I just felt like if we're going by enjoyment, I think this was the 4.5 star that I enjoyed the most this year. And it also, I remember just now, got me out of a reading slump. So that also justifies its high, its, its reign over the 4.5s. Okay, and then we get to the five stars. So we've got the two that I knew weren't gonna make the very tippy top of the list, but I still obviously love these books. I decided that number six was going to be A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole, which is a contemporary romance and I now have this book in sort of my toolbox for trying to get people into reading romance. I think it's a good kind of starter place because Alyssa Cole is just such a smart writer. I never read a bad book from her. She has interesting, smart characters. Her plots make sense. This has a really kind of high premise that gets delivered on. And I just think it's a crowd pleasing, wonderful book that made me just re-fall in love with her this year. I feel like this was a book that re just excited me about Alyssa Cole and everything that she does for the bookish community. That's number six. Number five, I decided had to be Jane Doe by Victoria Helen Stone. This was my number one book for a good chunk of the year for the four books we're gonna talk about sort of unseated it. But I just, this is a unique book. I've not read a lot of books like it. And that's why I felt like it had to kind of go over A Princess in Theory in this sort of middle tranche because it, I just haven't read a lot of books like it. It's a weird book and it's a book not everybody's gonna like but it totally worked for me and it just made me I don't know. I was reading this when I was in a lot of pain too, now that I'm casting my mind back. This is back when uh, my uh, current now diagnosed autoimmune disease was like running rampant. And this was just like a nice, I remember reading this in the bathtub on a night where I was not feeling well. And this just like really kind of taking me to a good place. So I also just appreciate it doing what books do for me, which is sort of take my mind off of things sometimes. Oh, and now we get to the top four guys. This was so hard. I had such a hard time deciding on the ordering here. So all of these books are fantastic. Please read every last one of these books. I love them so much. And I'm just going to talk about basically this is an ordering of different of the four emotions that these books evoke for me and how much enjoyment I feel like those emotions evoke. So number four is Astonishment. Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark is a astonishing novella that does more with its 185 pages than many most novels can do with like 500. Thematically, this is awesome. It has an amazing plot. It has great characters. World building is really cool. The magic system is really cool. And it's just such pointed commentary for 2020. Like it's a book, it's just, I am blown away by the masterful craftsmanship of Peter Jelly Clark and I cannot wait to read more from this author. So astonishment is my number four emotion. My number three emotion is just pure giddy joy. And that is Take a Hint Danny Brown from Talia Hibbert because this book just made it made me laugh, it made me smile, it made me happy. And it's hard. I mean, if a book can do that, that like, what a great book. So I just love, I love everything this is as a romance. Like this is a perfect contemporary romance to me and for what I like in this genre. And this particular book just gave me pure, just happiness. And in the year of our Lord 2020, anything that could just make us happy, I feel like that should just be celebrated. This book and this whole series really 100% did that for me. So good. And also, by the way, one I would put in my toolbox of potential books to hook a non-romance reader into trying romance if they're open to contemporary. Oh my gosh, guys, then we get to the top two. And when I tell you that I have gone back and forth on this just so many times, <laughs> I have one and then I have the other, then I have one, then I have the other. And finally, when I decided my criteria was going to be purely enjoyment, that is how I landed on this ordering. But if I filmed this on a different day, maybe it would come out differently. So I'm gonna say that number two is Black Reconstruction in America by W.E.B. Du Bois. This, the emotion for this is just righteous anger and just intellectual enrichment. This fed my mind and spirit in a way that 
good nonfiction does. And this is one of the best pieces of nonfiction I have ever read. I think if I were going to objectively try to say what the best book of this bunch is, probably it would be this. It's so hard to compare apples to oranges though, in terms of across genre, but like probably, I mean, this is such a classic that I feel like I would have to say this is objectively probably the best book. I think this book made me angry. This book made me cry. This book challenged me morally, emotionally, intellectually, just like all around. What a phenomenal book that I really exhort people to give a try. I listened to this as audio and I've been rereading with the audio and underlining uh, in a second read. So I can recommend that and yeah. This book, man, so, so good. If we're just gonna say the book I enjoyed the most this year, I am gonna have to go ahead and stick with Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse because this is a perfect high fantasy book for me. I love everything about this book. I have, I can't even really come up with what I think the objective criticisms of this book might be because I just don't see them. Ever, I, the, oh, I remember, I did hear somebody say that they wish it was longer or like more detailed and descriptive, but like it's 450 pages pages and I do feel like it's the first in a trilogy so we're gonna find out more as things go. I guess that's the only criticism I've really heard that makes any kind I, I don't know. I have no criticisms of this book. This is perfect for me. I think that it is a fast-moving fantasy book that manages multiple points of view really really well. It has a super rad magic system that is interesting. I'm also it has like an element of like the gods walking among us. That is something I've realized this year that I very much enjoy in a fantasy. I do tend to like you know, the gods walking on the mortal plane. So that's sort of a taste defining thing I've realized about myself this year. And this has that. It has a soupçon, like a hint of a love story that could go someplace, but it's not like the main thing, but it was there to like add some interest. There's a really fun sort of road trippy element to this, like with a sea voyage. I am so into just the ideas and the thematic content of this, which is something I always care about in my speculative fiction, sort of like what the underlying metaphor is. Just I just, I love this book. I just enjoy, this is the book I enjoyed reading the most this year. So for that reason, I feel like it has to stay at number one. Also, the cover design is beautiful on a superficial level. So there you go. My best book of 2020 is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. Cannot wait for more books in this series. And with that, that is all my best and worst of the year lists. And we've come to the end of my 2020 listicling. Yay. Uh, I do have some more kind of ending the year and starting the new year content coming for you guys. So I hope you will enjoy that. But definitely let me know what you thought of any of the books that you have read from this list in the comments down below, or maybe what your best book of 2020 was, or you think might be if you're still trying to figure that out. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.